Hello, everyone's everyone's. I am here for my review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season 10, episode 22. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am Lady T. I like to do reviews on scripted reality shows, reality shows, and I also do reactions. If you're returning, you're one of my peoples, welcome back. So, we don't have any comments from last week's video. So, let's jump right on in. You guys, I I am maybe because we're 22 episodes in and I'm already tired of everything that is going on. Kirk and Rashida have found a different angle instead of planking their marriage. They're going to be bringing her daddy in and help him play in their relationship because it's like the way things progress happened too fast and for my liking so I don't know if this had already happened and we just re do a reenactment I don't know because Kirk Rashida Miss Charlene and Rashida daddy they all meet up now y'all I've said this before and this is no shade because like I got some I don't know if it's some alopecia going on to where I got a few bald spots going on in my head that's why I haven't been rocking my passion to it. So, like, I'm going to the dermatologist and I'm going to get that checked out. But, so I got hair issues myself. I cannot talk. But, Kirk and the way his hair is now. Now, I don't know if it's because Kirk usually always has a hat on. So, we don't really be seeing his head like that. But, like, his hair looks like it's not real. And it's, it's giving off that it's fake. And it's just throwing me off. But, anyways... Rashida's daddy believes that basically Kirk is, Rashida is Kirk's meal ticket. That Rashida could have become who she is without Kirk. And basically she don't really need Kirk. And, <clears throat> and Kirk is just basically using her. And it's funny that Rashida nor her daddy realizes the reason why it, I, it may not be. Maybe I'm just looking too far into it. Hold on, y'all. That Rashida gravita gravitated toward the kind of man that her daddy was. Daddy got all these kids out here with multiple of the women. Kurt got kids by other women. Daddy, like he was a cheater in the past. Maybe currently... Kirk was the same thing. It's like maybe if you had been a better father, I'm not gonna say that was gonna change some things, but maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm just really looking for, looking too much into this. Like she may or may not have some daddy issues. Kirk was a little bit older than what she was, and for whatever reason, back in the day, we thought that was cute, and now we're realizing that it's very much creepy that grown men is going to the high school to pick up teenage girls. But that's another story for another time. Now we move over to Bambi in the studio. Now, first of all, this fur that Bambi had got, had going on, gorgeous. But she was giving me too many seasons. She got the fur. Fur would suggest it is winter time. It is cold. I need to be warm. But also, she got on biker shorts and like a jacket along with the fur so I was confused I'm like okay you want to show off your fur but okay maybe when there's a scene where it's December you know November January a little bit of February will be time to be rocking a fur but just to be rocking it for the sake of the rocking it just be throwing me off basically Bambi is tired of Mama D and all her antics y'all know Mama D she loves a good prop when she went to Miss Shirley's store and put that dog on nest and told Miss Shirley to sit on the egg until it was right. You know, she made that obituary for Bambi's mama who was still alive. So, Mama D, she goes from zero to a hundred real quick. And on top of that, you are befriending my husband's exes. I'm not here for that, and I don't really need you in my life, for real, for you are my husband's mama, granted, but I don't need to have anything to do with you. As for y'all, I'm, I'm so glad I was blessed with a wonderful mother-in-law, and it is sad that she is no longer with us, because she treated me like I was her child, and my mama treats my husband like he is hers, like... We not up in your business. We not doing anything that's going to disrespect you 
or y'all marriage. And I appreciate that, but it is only so much that you can do when you're dealing with a person like Mama D. Even Doggo did, Jack was like, yeah, Mama D a lot. And that is his cousin. Now, speaking of going back to um, Kirk and Rashida, one thing children are going to do is they're going to tell the truth. Because Rashida's daddy come walking up the car to talk about some getting your grandpa a hug. And he's like, who is this man hugging me? I don't know this grandpa and who would you speak of? I don't know this man. Why is he hugging me? Why does he know my name? Now, I'm going to tell you a little something. When I was little, my mama told me and my brother, do not talk to strangers. So, we was... I don't even know where we is. My mama just told me this story. I don't remember it. I'm just repeating what she said. It was some woman that was talking to me and I was on mute. And I guess my little child self had had enough. And I was like, Mama, can you please tell this woman I do not talk to strangers? And knowing me at that time, I may have said it with a little bit of attitude and the woman got offended. But I'm like, I'm only doing what my mama said. My mama said not to talk to strangers. Ma'am, you were a stranger, therefore I will not talk to you. I will talk to my mama and have her relate a message to you. But as far as me talking to you, that's what I'm not going to do. But anyways, the daddy get to seeing what they working on. And it's looking like they are planning on building houses and maybe selling and or renting them out. And once he see what they got going on, now he ready to move to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all really about something. Y'all doing something. Y'all going to be making some money. I can be here living off the y'all making of the money. That's what it was giving off. But the fact that we went from an episode or two ago, y'all cussing and fussing each other out, to now your daddy going to be living in Atlanta and possibly in one of your building's houses. Okay. So, y'all, Scrappy, he went to the dentist to get some his teeth ripped on. Now, I don't know if he was just going for, like, a regular, regular cleaning, but they had to give him the, the, the gas. I would prefer gas because, like, my gums are very, very sensitive. So, when I get a deep clean, like, it is painful. And I don't like the shots. One, because I don't like my mouth feeling like it is doggone when it hanging down to the ground. I don't like that feeling. I don't like the shot. So I understand where like you, your gums are sensitive. So you're going to need a little something. But it was like they was giving him shots too. Whatever. Bambi couldn't make it so Mama D shows up. And of course. Mama D got to make a big deal out of whoever Scrappy is with at that time. Not being there for him while he's going through a medical problems. Y'all know a few years ago she was mad because Erica had left, had left Scrappy for a day yet. When he was having his asthma attack. But it's like ma'am. He contrib contributes to his asthma attacks. Because he was smoking at the time. Whether he still does that I don't know. But I know smoking is not good if you have asthma. So that was that thing. And Erica had to go to work. Because she had to make this money. Well he getting his dinner work done now. She was there with him to know, help him drive him home. And all that good stuff. But Scrappy has been put in between his mama and his wife. My wife don't want to hang out or have anything to do with my mama because my mama's out here hanging out with my ex, making posts, going to that ex's baby shower, claiming that this baby is her grandchild, but then coming to my wife and expecting everything to be cool. And he lets mama de know there was consequences to your actions. You out here befriending Shay, making comments like it's scrappy to daddy. This my grandbaby doing all these things is not helping your situation. And then we add on to the theatrics that you like to do. This man walking into the house and Mama Dean and got a bullhorn. And he trying to figure out where the bullhorn came from because he was just sitting right next to her. Obviously, she got a prop section in the back of whatever Uber she was riding around in. For, you know, occasions like so when she needs to pull out this bullhorn and ask for the grandbabies to come outside. Ma'am, this is why Bambi don't have nothing to do with you. This is why Jock was like, yeah, Mama D is a lot handsome. Like, I'm the kind of person, like, I will shut down quick and fast and in a hurry. I will go on dog on in silent mode. I'm almost like a computer where you're not getting nothing out of me because I'm, I'm not friend to deal with it. 
I'm at the age now where I refuse. It's, I just want, once you get a certain age, you just don't want to deal with certain things. And then on top of that, your body, but almost betraying you. I was washing my face the other day and I don't know where this back spasm came out of. It was like, oh no. And it happened again. I'm at the age where I'm making noise, and it could be because I need to take no exercise and do all that good stuff, where I'm making noise when I'm sitting down or getting up. I got all that stuff going on. I don't want to deal with what you got going on as well. I know this ain't about me. This is about loving Hip Hop Atlanta. So, Kendra... Jock, Meta, and Spice, and Spice's boyfriend, whose name escapes me, meet up. Because Kendra got some answers. She's getting doggone it different timelines of when Meta and Jock slept together, kissed, hung out, played spades, Uno, went to the movies. She's getting a different timeline on these events, and she just wants to know the time and the dates. Was it while I was with him? Were we on a break? Was this before us? Was this during us? Now, Matter feels that they are married now, so what does it matter? I say, it matters if I got married to this man and he was still sleeping with you as of late while we was together. Not on a break. Not while he was, you know, we was on a break and he, you know, got somebody else pregnant. No. While we were still working, we worked things out, got back together, committed to each other. Was you having any type of relationship with my husband? Matt is tired of people feeling like she's a liar. She says she messed with Jock from 2008 to 2009. But now she's saying that you don't have to be with somebody to have sex with them. And I was like, I need some clarifications because you can take that in multiple ways. Is that... You don't have to be with somebody as far as you don't have to be in a relationship with somebody to have sex. Or is it you don't have to be in the same room with somebody for y'all to have sex. I needed some more clarification on that because you can, like I said, take it multiple ways. Kendra wants to know if it wasn't sex, then what was it? Now, this is when Meta gets to bringing out some printed messages. You know, she got her receipts. After reading said receipts, Kenya walks off. She's mad at Jock. Jock is kind of mad at the whole situation. Meta is like, I don't know why y'all mad at me before. Like, I'm single. I can do what I want to do. Y'all not going to clock who I am sleeping with and who I'm not sleeping with. This is when Kenya wants to go through Jock's phone and she wants to go to Meta's phone. Because, yes, you have these messages, but messages can be altered. I want to look at the phone. This is when Maddie was like, well, one of these is printed on the iPhone, and now I got an Android, or it was printed on the an Android, so now I got an iPhone, and I can't be... Well, however, you got the messages, because you had to get the messages of late in order to print these out. What phone was you using at that time where you was able to print out these messages? I want to see that phone. Because you had to just recently have it. Now, granted, I have an iPhone and I, I'm a, I'm a message keeper because I just be don't, I just don't be, you know, deleting messages. And this is what helped OG from Basketball Wives. Evelyn tried to make her out as a liar that was basically stalking Ocho Cinco. And it would have looked like they had... OG not had her messages. She would just seem like some stalker out here. But thankfully, OG had her phone and she had messages on her phone that wasn't just screenshots. No, we're going to open up our phone. We're going to go to messages and bam, bam, bam. You really don't believe me? This is the number it came from. <clears throat> so it was like, Meta, it's kind of seeming like you not all the way for real because like you oh i had you know different kind of phones you know android iphone you can't switch over and all these things so i was like you was able to get those messages as a reason where's that phone at questions now i still don't understand why kendra well i can understand but i don't understand you got this with this man who had 50 living kids 
and has had several of the girlfriends and cheated at several of the girlfriends or situationships while he's been on this show. Did you think that he was not going to do the same thing to you just because he put a ring on it? Questions. So, that was the gist. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment below. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. It is free all day, every day, free 99. Make sure your notifications are on. So, my beautiful face of a video, you can click on it. You can like it and share with your people. And you can come over and be one of my peoples. If you're already one of my peoples, oh, welcome back. Y'all know what to do. Tell your people to tell their people to come over and be one of my peoples by clicking that icon above. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.